McPherson. Hi, Vic. It's Claire. So, how are things going in Los Angeles? Hey, Claire. I don't know. I don't feel like I'm making any headway. I'm having a hard time establishing a link between all these killings. You're obsessing over this. If you hadn't quit, you wouldn't be trying to put the pieces together all alone. Don't start, Claire. I know you don't approve of my decision to leave the FBI. But working for an asshole like Browning? No, thank you. Browning won't be here forever, you know. His decision to close the investigation after the mass killer's death wasn't welcomed by everyone in the Chicago Bureau. I don't need to remind you that there's absolutely nothing to prove that the fucker's really dead. He fell in the water when I shot him. I know I hit him. As far as I've heard, his body was never found. Well, no, you're right about that. Of course you've got doubts. The water flowing under the Tominova Bridge was ice cold. If your bullet didn't kill him, cold water would have finished him off. And I'd love to be so sure. But I think of all the women he victimized. Have you found any information on the first killer? The one who the Chicago murderer was supposedly copycatting? His name was Ackerman, I think? Yeah, Mark Ackerman, son of Governor Herbert Ackerman. He was locked up in an asylum at the beginning of the 30s after two strings of murders. He was never officially found guilty. His father had him hospitalized to avoid the scandal, with the FBI's full cooperation. Corruption never goes out of style. It makes me sick. And the retired inspector, Harrison, the one you wanted to see in California, did you meet with him? Yeah. He gave me the whole case file for the 1956 investigation. He's convinced that Mark Ackerman was behind this series of murders in Los Angeles. Really? A killer who murders women over several decades, then a copycat who starts it all over again 50 years later? That's terrifying. Yeah. But this case is personal, too. My grandfather got himself embroiled, and he lost more than just his illusions. I want to find the truth for his sake, no matter what it costs me. I hope you'll find what you're looking for, Vic. If I can help you in any way. Do you have any news on Mia, the killer's latest victim? Is she still in the hospital? She's doing better. She's come out of shock. The doctors are optimistic. She should be able to go home soon. I went by to see her yesterday. She's gonna leave Chicago. So many bad memories. What's new at the FBI? Miller still having stomach trouble? Uh-huh. He got sick at the New Year's potluck. Some joker put Tabasco in his salmon canapes. We haven't seen Browning much lately. He's distanced himself from the Bureau since your resignation. It doesn't change much anyway. He was never exactly close to his agents. Yeah. You can say that again. The only place for an ice cube like that is in a glass of whiskey. Where's the investigation at? Is anyone working on it since Browning cut the funding? Officially, the killer is considered dead, so Browning closed the case. He seemed rather in a hurry to put that one to bed. <sighs> Obviously. There were some pretty well-placed people who used to frequent some of the girls who were killed. Browning's one of them. I wonder what he had to give up to bury the scandal. And I think that I used to work under him. Ugh, makes me sick. I hope Richard's not harassing you. He's left several messages on my answering machine. He just called me to ask about Mia. He feels responsible for letting her go, giving the killer his opening. I know, he's taking it hard. There's nothing to say that the killer wouldn't have taken him out to get his hands on Mia. Anyway, he misses you, that's for sure. He's looking forward to you coming back. I have one last favor to ask, Claire. A big one. I need access to the FBI's database. For your research, huh? Wow, I'm playing fast and loose with the rules a lot lately. I don't want to get you into trouble. Don't worry about me. The access code was changed a few days ago. I'll check it out and text you, okay? Thanks, Claire. I'll let you go now. Talk to you soon. Well, let's try to review the clues we've got. I'll record my notes onto my smartphone while we go through them.
a newspaper article dated March 19th, 1956. It recounts the arrest of a suspect in the L.A. murders. I doubt there's a connection between the two cases. Another idiot journalist greedy for a story. A newspaper article dated March 19th, 1956. A brochure of the Ackerman exhibit organized by Richard. There are reproductions of paintings as well as some interesting information. The Labyrinth Foundation. That's the second time I come across them while I'm investigating. I think they have a website. A newspaper clipping dated March 22nd, 1956. The article talks about a fire in the hospital where Mark Ackerman was committed. This nurse, she could certainly be linked to Ackerman. I've got to find out more info about her. A newspaper clipping, dated March 22nd, 1956. A Los Angeles murders file. Harrison gave it to me. His conclusions differ from the official version. Sarkovic? I, I know that name. Where have I heard it before? The Los Angeles Murders File. Women represented in these paintings are Ackerman's victims. The women represented in these paintings are Ackerman's victims. The killer lost his mask before falling in the river. According to what Claire's told me, the lab analyzed it but didn't find anything. The battery's dying. I better plug it in.
Herbert Ackerman, an art lover? Hmm. And this Beatrice Allen? I must find out more about her. Beatrice Allen is the woman painted by Ackerman on one of his paintings. I'm sure of that. I need more info. Her son may be another interesting lead to follow, but I'd need his full name. That painter's been dead a long time. The journalist must have given a false name. It's Richard. Well, I hope everything's going well in L.A. I was sad to spend New Year's Eve without you. Call me back soon. Hi, Vic. It's Richard. I miss you. I'm looking forward to you coming back to Chicago. Love you, sweetheart. destroyed in the 30s because of the deal the FBI made with Herbert Ackerman. Just think, it was the era of the untouchables. be a coincidence. I'm not here at the moment, but you can leave a message. Jesus Christ, Richard. If you're that nurse's grandson, why didn't you ever tell me? I have to get back to Chicago right away and get to the bottom of this. Claire, I fell asleep in front of the TV. What time is it? Almost 10 p.m. Sorry to wake you. Do you want me to call you back tomorrow? No, no. I was having a nightmare anyway. As soon as I fall asleep, I relive the same old stories. Still having nightmares about the Chicago killer? Vic, you have to stop thinking about all that. 
It happened almost four years ago. Tell that to my subconscious. Were you calling me about the case? I have the results of Ellen Dunnigan's preliminary autopsy. Let me guess. The killer left no trace. Absolutely nothing. The body was carefully cleaned of any clue that could have led us to the killer. The modus operandi seems identical to the other victims. Various wounds meant to inflict pain, then a bullet wound causing death. Good lord. It's been going on for almost three years and this asshole still hasn't made a single mistake. Are you going to be in Maine for a while? I still have to question a few possible witnesses. Garris wants this by the book, but I doubt it'll turn up anything. Oh yes, your new partner. Fresh out of Quantico. I gotta go, Claire. Hernandez is up to her old tricks on the news again. Okay. I'll call you if I have anything new. Take care of yourself. The horribly tortured body of Ellen Dunnigan was found this morning. The body was discovered on the side of Route 201, less than a mile outside of the small town of Jackman, Maine. The young woman, a Holton native, had disappeared on September 22nd. The modus operandi removes any ambiguity over the killer's identity. This is without a doubt the latest chapter in the heinous rampage of the East Coast killer. As with the previous murders, the killer filmed the suffering which he inflicted on his victim. He then sent DVDs of the footage to the authorities and the media. The FBI has refused any comment in the wake of this new crime. Special Agent McPherson, who has been on the case from the beginning, seems completely incapable of making any headway whatsoever in this case. How many innocent victims will have to die before the killer is stopped? It's a legitimate question, given the investigator's utter lack of results. This is Paloma Hernandez for 5 TV. So, just like that, I'm completely overwhelmed? What a bitch. McPherson. This is Paloma Hernandez. Do you remember me, Agent McPherson? Unfortunately, yes. I just saw your mug on TV. One doesn't forget that kind of trauma. Very funny. Listen, I know you don't like my work, but I don't have anything against you personally. I also have people to answer to, and the competition is fierce. Aw, oh, you're breaking my heart, Hernandez. Switch careers. The FBI is hiring. I'm not calling to apologize. I have a proposal for you. Can you meet me at the Bishop Motel in Jackman for a chat? Right. You want me to join your TV games. I'm afraid I'm going to have to decline your offer. I'm in touch with an informant. He has discovered certain information about the killer. I'm ready to divulge it if you agree to give me exclusive access to the FBI investigation. That way, we'd be working together instead of being at loggerheads. What do you say? Are you serious? You've been making my life hell since this case started, but now you want us to be best friends forever because suddenly it suits your purposes? If you've got information on the killer, then give it to me. No conditions. If you conceal evidence or hinder our investigation in any way, I can guarantee you a stint in the slammer. Night, Hernandez.
End of recording. To hear your message again, please press pound.